Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Wyatt 6 video. Uh, I've spent hours going through my notifications to try and bring you the latest thoughts, the latest theories, but something has happened in the past 24 hours that I think has to get our attention first. And it is this. This is Adam Pierce's Twitter account, which has been hacked and seemingly is been hacked by Uncle Howdy and the Wyatt Six, right? So this is uh, first name John, who did a great job of getting a video. It's only 14 seconds long, but it shows you Adam Pierce's account, which has now gone back to normal, right? Uh, this was like in the early hours of like Wednesday morning, right? Uh, so here we've got, you can see the name being changed over to Postman. You can see the profile picture being changed over, right? It's been changed over to this image that we're about to look at. Uh, same with the banner. That got changed over to this image. This image was also tweeted out on this account like multiple times. Um, they did manage to get the account back, right? But you can see kind of how much disruption there was. This is Adam Pierce's official account. It's not like a parody or anything. It's 190 thousand followers um it's it's the proper account so if we just press play you can see here look there we've got one post another post another post another post another post another post it's the same picture right um some of you might not have seen this but uh adam pierce had to go and visit bray in the firefly funhouse to get him to sign a contract it was for a uh, triple threat match and so he had to go and visit roman he had to go and visit braun he had to go and visit bray uh, so he went into the firefly funhouse and when he went in he was dressed as a postman and uh that's why the postman name features that's why he's wearing the hat and the outfit but there he is look uh in the firefly funhouse there's abby the witch of course uh and so this is seemingly in reference to that i mean what i would say is i don't think this is something that adam is doing on his own back right uh because i kind of feel like there's a little bit of work that's gone into this to change your banner to change your profile picture to send out multiple tweets as well. Like, I feel like this is something that they've kind of had planned, if you will. But I feel like this is meant to be the Wyatt Six that is doing this. Uh, the rest of it was normal. The rest of it was uh, absolutely fine. But it was just this bit up here that had uh, all been changed over. So that was in the early hours. Uh, here's SlamX said Adam Pierce is remembering who he is and it's true if you look there the word remember remember it also has his location as playhouse which is interesting i don't think that's normally there uh so yeah he was going to that and then today we got another one so if it was just that that'd be interesting but today we got this this uk time i think was like uh 10 past six in the like early evening today and uh it says adam pierce pierce always delivers remember postman so uh yeah fade said uncle howdy has got adam pierce in hell so this post was put out today on uh on his account uh, adam pierce though came out 11 hours ago and he was like i don't know what you guys are on about regarding my twitter the only thing i can see is vile negativity and that's always on this app love somebody today so he's kind of just he's like i don't know what you mean uh, i'm looking at my account my account looks absolutely fine um because obviously everyone's getting in touch with him going are you okay are you okay i mean look if we go back to it now his location is not playhouse it's wwe universe the remember isn't there that's his banner that's his profile picture uh 191 this is his account love somebody today that's his pinned uh one there uh, shout out to all celebrate in juneteenth and there's the post we just read out and kind of as you make your way down, that's it. I mean, all of that stuff that we just looked at, it's not here. 
So, yeah, very interesting that. Very interesting. So I don't know what's trying to be communicated. I don't know if this is Uncle Howdy and the Wyatt Six, like, hacking into Adam Pierce's account. I don't know what the purpose is. I don't know what that's setting up. We know they are anti-establishment. But equally, Adam Pierce here is seemingly fine. Uh, he seemingly was not caught up in the massacre that took place in the guerrilla position. Again, we've had no further information on that, which I do think is disappointing, to be honest. I do think WWE should have put out a message sort of saying thank you for your concerns and, uh, you know, your interest uh, just to confirm uh, several people were hurt, but they're being checked on in the hospital at the moment. Uh, none of our talent were involved, but um, still our thoughts are with those that, that were affected. You know, they could have come out with something. So uh, seemingly because Adam is tweeting today, I'm guessing he was not caught up in this uh, this massacre. But uh, even so, his account is being hacked. So what are they trying to communicate with this? And how is this going to play into things moving forward? So had to start with this. I think it's probably the most uh, interesting thing we've got uh, that's happening at the moment. Um, but we have a lot of stuff, man. Look at all this. Look at all this that we've got to try and get through. So uh, as I said, I've been going through my notifications. I wanted to know your thoughts and your theories. Uh, I've pulled a load of those out. I haven't done everything because I think we might end up doing a video on the second channel tomorrow where we really dig into that a bit more. But this is the stuff that really caught my eye. So let's get through it. The Pirates Platoon said, why did they let the cameraman survive the massacre if they wanted to take down everyone? Every producer was laid out. My theory is that since the bride pointed them, they kind of said, look at what we can do. And that was their way of telling him that he survives. I agree. Uh, the reason that I wanted to include this is because... They did destroy, like, everyone they saw backstage, seemingly. But um, there was a cameraman and a producer. There was a guy in, like, a white shirt. I don't know if you've seen, like, the angles from the crowd. But there wasn't just, like, one cameraman. There was, like, a dude in a white shirt as well, who I think was the producer of that segment. And uh, they spared them. So I think it's just interesting to think, you know, along the lines of kayfabe, why would they spare them? Well, I think you're absolutely right. It's so that we can see and the world can see and the message can be sent. This is what we can do. And also, we are here. We've arrived um, without a cameraman and whatever. They wouldn't be able to send that message, would they? So I thought that was uh, uh, good. I thought it was a good point worth just touching on. Michael said, my thought on the bride is it's to represent Bray and Jojo, who were supposed to get wed. The bride mask is shattered and broken, like Jojo was shattered and lost after losing Bray. The mask now is being repaired and filled in, like Jojo will hopefully be as time passes by. This is just my opinion on the character, says Michael. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we're talking about some pretty heavy themes there. Uh, I did do a post, actually, about the bride and that situation, which I don't know if it's in this folder. I hope I did include it because I don't know that I did. Let's, uh, let's jump over to my profile because it'll just be at the top. So uh, this is what I jotted down, right? Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't gone back to research this. I've just followed this story, obviously, as I've been watching WWE. So in my mind, this is how it fits and this is how it flows, okay? I, I am totally open for people going, well, actually, we also found this out or actually that bit just change this bit right I, i'm I'm, uh, I'm kind of um detailing just the rough outline okay let's put it that way so um sister abigail passed away years ago okay her spirit though remained in the wyatt compound randy orton then burned that compound down and bray mourned the loss of abigail again you might remember that when that compound was burned down 
Bray was really suffering. Like he was like, it really hit him hard. And so he did kind of mourn the loss of Abigail all over again. It wasn't that Abigail was physically in that, that building, but her spirit was. And if you remember in the Firefly Funhouse, there is a painting of that moment and you can see someone in the compound. And that's because Abigail's essence, her spirit was in the compound at that time. So he took it as if she was basically there. Right. So um, we know that Sister Abigail isn't with us anymore. OK. Uh, in the Firefly Funhouse, we saw Abby the Witch. Now, it was never established if Abby was just inspired by Sister Abigail or if it was something more like, could the spirit of Sister Abigail have got into Bray and then manifested itself as Abby the Witch, right? To my knowledge, we never actually 100% established if Abby the Witch was Sister Abigail, like the spirit of Sister Abigail, or was it just Bray's memories and thoughts of Sister Abigail that kind of manifested itself into Abby the Witch, right? So I, I don't know. Did, did Sister Abigail die and uh, her soul get released and is now gone? Uh, or did it manage to find its way into Bray and into Abby the Witch? And this is quite important because obviously you'll see where we're going with this. So when Bray passed away, those puppet personalities were set free, right? Each of those puppets kind of had their own personalities. In uh, my mind i believe that the fun house was in bray's mind and i think that was sort of confirmed by bruce pritchard in the documentary right so when bray passed away those puppets personalities which is a weird thing to think about they were set free uh uncle howdy found them and gave them new vessels gave them a new body to live in right and that is the wyatt six that we see now as such, Nikki is seemingly based on Abby the Witch. So you can see it's important for us to know, is Sister Abigail in Abby the Witch? Because if so, Sister Abigail is now in Nikki. Or was Abby the Witch just um, inspired by Sister Abigail? So there's some confusion, though. The confusion is that Nikki is wearing white. Abby wore black. So... I think that the bride has turned out to be Nikki. But the thing is that, uh, is it right that we call that the bride? Because now I feel like Nikki is the living embodiment of Abby the Witch. So is she a witch? Is she Abby the Witch? Why is she wearing white? Uh, like, these are definitely questions that I'm trying to find answers on. And I don't think we can find... We can find thoughts and theories, but I'm looking for answers. Like, I, I really would love for Rob and for the creative department to really explore this and to try and kind of, you know, put a bit of a bow on some of these things. Because we still refer to the bride as the bride because she wears white. But I feel pretty confident that... The Nikki character is based on Abby the Witch. And I feel pretty confident that Nikki that we saw it during Nightbirds was the bride. So is she the bride and Abby the Witch? Are they the same thing? This is where the conversation is regarding this character for me. Uh, so confusion continues regarding if Nikki is now Sister Abigail or just inspired by Sister Abigail. This is something I would love for creative to explore. I know that was heavy and I would totally understand if you got lost with it, right? Hopefully I explained it the best I could. Um, I'm not aware that there's anything extra that I've added there. It, uh, in my uh, mind, this is the story. This is how it's gone for Sister Abigail going into Abby the Witch, now going into Nikki, right? So... Um, yeah, I, th I just thought this was quite important to explore because it does touch on it does touch on like the whole bride conversation 
right? And it does touch on like Sister Abigail and everything. And that's just what we were touching on here. So my thought on the bride is it represents Bray and Jojo. Well, we think the bride is Nikki and we think Nikki is Abby the Witch. So it could, it, the bride could be representative of Bray and Jojo, but how does that now fit into what we've just said? So that's kind of where my head's at with that character. And I know it's confusing. The Sister Abigail story is not an easy story. Um, but, you know, I, I've tried to make it as, as clear as possible there. So thoughts on that would uh, obviously be uh, welcome. So, Michael, I do like your thought, though, about how if scrap all of what we just said, and if it's a bride, that being symbolic of Bray and Jojo, um, we know that they put those little references in before, like the stitching was the Roman numerals of their what was going to be their wedding anniversary. And, uh, you know, there's lots of the Mockingbird is his nickname for Jojo. So lots of little references, uh, Easter eggs put into the costume. So I wouldn't be surprised if that was another one. But as I said, how does that fit into what we just discussed? Uh, right, CM Chunk said there could have been other people attacked backstage. Uh, they just didn't show them on camera. That might explain the part of the report that was confusing you. Mm, that's true because there is, if you watched yesterday, uh, Fightful reported that there were talents. The talent that got caught up in the attack was, you know, by design. And so we were saying, well, the only talent we saw was Chad Gable. And there's loads of theories but and thoughts, but at the moment, it seems like it's only Chad Gable, right? And if you've not seen yesterday's video about the massacre, I'd recommend you watch it because I think there's some really good stuff in there that kind of shows certain people in better lighting. And so you can see that they're not Seth or uh, there's another one where there's a, a guy down that people thought was Braun and you can see the tattoo on his arm and they've been able to actually find the person that that is. And it's not Triple H, it's not Braun. Um, it's someone that's like outside of the company that they bring in to be a security guard and whatnot so yeah there's there's quite a bit going on at the moment i'd say if you've not seen that video check that out um but yeah the bit that confused me was it said i think uh multiple talent was caught up in the attack um i mean that could also be described if you think about enhancement talent like if they brought in enhancement talent that was attacked they, that might show itself that way as well. So the wording of that Fightful report was mm, open to interpretation. So, But CM uh, Chunk thinking that maybe there was some talent that got caught up in this that we just haven't seen yet. But that's why a statement from WWE would have been very welcome. Uh, not the boys, Timothy, said regarding the vid about who was attacked, uh, when you read the article about talent who left, could that be Drew? Did anyone else mention this? So, again, uh, it spoke about the multiple talents that were caught up in the attack and the uh, talent that left before was all by design. And so, you know, the multiple talents that were attacked was confusing because I only know of Chad's. And talents that left before the attack. Well, surely that was everyone, wasn't it? So, but um, here, not the boys, Timothy is thinking, do they mean Drew? Do they mean like left WWE? Or do they mean left the building? It's very confusing. I think they could have made this thing a hell of a lot clearer, <laughs> you know, unless they want the confusion, unless that's by design, you know? Maybe they want us to talk about this and theorize about this and hopefully we get some answers like on SmackDown, you know, perhaps it's all part of the plan. Uh, SlamX said, when you click on We're Here Now, it takes you to the YouTube video of the reveal. Uh, appreciate that pointing it out if you know who you are. So there we go. Amazing. And that reveal, what has been number one on the trending page at one point, slipped to number two. Uh, now it's number four, apparently, on the trending page. Uh, so, yeah, if you go to this and now click on We're Here, you go to that there. Amazing.
Right, King Kong Chaplin said, Howdy hates liars. And Gable kept lying about being in a family with Alpha Academy. Who else is a liar on the roster? I thought this was quite a good train of thought, right? I thought this was kind of good. So on Raw, Finn took the room key. So could he be a target? And also, he was the first person to have a match with The Fiend. So you've got that nice full circle moment. So I, I like that. Dom and Liv, question mark. Mm. Carlito attacking Dragon Lee, like turning on Dragon Lee. Uh, damage control, they lied to Bailey, right? I mean, there's been loads that have been mentioned. I mean, people have said, like, it could be Seth because he turned on his brothers in the shield. It could be Carmelo because he turned on Trick Williams down in NXT. Like, I'm pretty sure you can find ways of connecting anyone in W. At some point, everyone's turned on someone in WWE. That's just part of the game, isn't it? Really? So I do like this train of thought, though. Um, like here, AJ lied about retiring just the other day. Solo lies about speaking with Roman. Santos lied when he turned on Ray. You know, uh, so uh, I, I do like that train of uh, thought. I'm not sure that's the direction that we're necessarily heading in, but uh, definitely something to think about. Uh, here, Mark, shout out to you. Uh, tagging me in this. Uh, Bronson said... Uh, let's click on it. Lurking backstage. Seems I avoided some weird shiz. <laughs> so that was Bronson. Uh, just confirming that he managed to avoid some weird shiz. Uh, Daniel said, I'll send it here. Uh, the image that flashed up at the end uh, on Monday. I can see the therapist. Can't be Nikki. She was already there. Now, Okay, I, I slightly disagree that it can't be Nikki. She was already there. I don't think it matters because I think it's just a video that's played, right? Um, so I think the show comes to an end and then a video gets played of, like, a, a female going, like, that to the camera. It's only, like, a second long, if that. Um, and the mask is Nikki's mask, right, with all the lines on. So And, and it's dark hair by the looks of it as well. So I was happy that this was Nikki. What I will say is, why Nikki? Nikki is just a member in the group, and there's five people in the group at the moment. So why have they only shown her? I mean, is it going to be a case that at the end of SmackDown, we get another one, and it's a different member? And then on Monday, we get a div another one, and it's a different member. Perhaps they've done. Perhaps these might be part of the vignettes that they filmed. We didn't. We haven't spoke about that. We know they film vignettes. So maybe these quick little moments here are some of the vignettes they filmed the other day. And perhaps every member is going to get a, a quick little one-second moment like this, you know? So I, I feel like it is Nikki. And I feel like the mask shows us that it's Nikki and the dark hair shows us that it's Nikki. I certainly don't think it's the therapist, but uh, it's an interesting thought. But what it did make me think is, what if it's Alexa? Because there are people thinking that that bride was Alexa, and we know that bride had dark hair. So it's not impossible for Alexa to have dyed her hair or be wearing a mask. And... If the women in the group are going to wear similar masks like this, the Kintsugi masks, then maybe Alexa's got one as well. And so, you know, so it took me down that road then. I still think this is Nikki. I still think this is Nikki. I don't think it's Alexa. I don't think it's the therapist. But I stopped and I thought about it enough where I was like, I'm going to add this to the video because it is just one of those that you kind of chew over so yeah interesting and then i also thought it'd be a good way to remind myself of just talking about this moment because we've spoken about them arriving and the we're here blowing the lantern out but then you do get this like one second clip and we haven't really spoke about that so it was a good excuse to touch on that as well Uncle Rebel said, I can't wait for Chad Gable to come back to Raw next week with amnesia. He could start thanking everyone again and thinking that everything is fine 
with Alpha Academy. Uh, and it's true, I've seen people making the comments like, you know, there was a theory that The Fiend was changing people. People seemed to change after they had interacted with The Fiend. And um, that could be very interesting. You know, seeing Chad Gable, you know, we thought that the Creeds were going to turn heel. What if Gable turns face after his interaction with Uncle Howdy? That's interesting, that is. I like that from Uncle Revel. Uh, May Yang Music said, Days, I might be way off base here. That's fine. But I thought the other Wyatt Six members were named Hex, Truncheon, Prey, and Spark. We know Howdy already. I thought that because of the archive recovered headings with those names. What do you think? So I really liked this, and um, it's one that I... I, can't, I hadn't forgotten about it, but I just think that I don't know that those are names that I want us to go with, right? I mean, I think Hex is fine for uh, Abby, for Nikki, right? Truncheon, I think, would have been the name for Dexter. Truncheon. Prey would be the new name for Eric Rowan. And Spark would be the name for... Um, Joe Gacy, uh, uh, they just feel a little bit retribution to me. You know, when we had retro the group retribution a few years ago, we had T Bar and Mace and Slapjack, Truncheon and Prey and Spark feel like they could be in that group, and people did not appreciate retribution. Right, yeah, that group did not land. So. Going with these names, uh, I don't know. It, it, it doesn't really do it for me personally. I don't mind Hex. I, I could maybe get away with Spark, but I don't know how I feel about Truncher. <laughs> but you're right. You are right. Those are the names, the headers of the notes that we know relate to each of these members. Uh, in the journal, there are notes that brought these people into the group and reasons why they got brought into the group. And each one has got a header. And we know that Hex, Trench, and Prey, and Spot are those headers. They may be the names of these members. So, yep, brilliant. Uh, if you are off base, um, I'm going off base with you as that being a very valid theory. Right, here's Shadow. Shadow said, when Rowan said hell, star, star, it's a double meaning, maybe even a triple meaning. Hell, star, star could be hello. Hell, star, star could be hell, the goddess of the underworld from Norse mythology. And hell, star, star could be pronounced like hell. So... Yeah, interesting. I did question this. Why did they not do the two L's? And perhaps it's that there. I, I feel like this middle one is, you know, it being the goddess of the underworld. But then my question would be, why is Rowan talking about a goddess of the underworld? Are we starting the builds and the tease towards Alexa? People think that Alexa may have been peering round the corner during that uh, ending of Raw anyway. So perhaps we've already started the teases of Alexa. So I don't know. That's definitely something to uh, be keeping an eye on. It was just something that Rowan tweeted out after Raw. Again, I think it was in yesterday's video. Scott said, I could have swore that the circle camera on the video the battery life was 33 percent yes um to us seeing it live 333 is the same time mika rotunda addressed the time of bray's unfortunate passing i don't know if these threes mean so much. i thought this was really interesting so again yesterday's video we read the Mika Rotunda thing, uh, the post about how she felt when she saw the end of Raw. And she said that like 333 will forever be like etched in the family's consciousness. Um, I believe that to be the time that Bray passed, uh, Wyndham passed. Uh, and so uh, it is interesting that on this, it, the battery being at 33 was something that... Um, and I suppose, could you say that this 
is no longer active, right? At, uh, uh, and it's at 33. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know if this is just a little Easter egg connected with Ray's passing. I, I'm probably leaning towards it isn't. But I do agree with you. I do agree with Scott that there's just there's something with these threes. Like, why was that at 33%? Could have been 100%. Could have been any number, right? And we know that they are very good at communicating with, like, numbers. Like, does the 33 mean something? Perhaps it doesn't. But then you're right. To see the 333 that she mentioned in her post, I can see how you've come to the connection there uh, of, of linking these two. So, very good. Very interesting. I think a lot of this is just food for thought. This is the kind of stuff that I'm being sent, to be honest. Uh, Wrestle Knight said, I love this. I've been binging Firefly Funhouse lately, and I really think this might be the root fiend Alexa, right? Now, I think this is like fan fiction that uh, has been put together. It's, it's an interesting read. Uh, the reason why I wanted to include this is because of this doll, which I can't remember if that's the doll that Bray left around Miz's house. Do you remember that? That was sick. That was so good. I think, uh, didn't Miz and Maurice go into, like, their kids' room and they found a, a doll that looked like this? Really cool. But, um, yeah, I mean, is this what a female fiend could look like? It, this is... Th th I'd forgotten about that we'd done this, to be honest. This is something that doesn't seem to get brought up all that much. So I'd forgotten that we'd done this. This doll with, like, a fiend face on. And there's a lot of people that want to see Alexa come back and potentially channel the Fiend. Uh, I think a lot of people are hoping that uh, we do get to see the Fiend in some form again. There's people out there that don't want that. They think it should be left in the past. But there are people out there that want to see the Fiend return. Is this like a female Fiend? Is this what a female Fiend could look like? And if it did look like that, if this was Alexa... um. You know, would this, would this linking it back to this doll, would that kind of make it more palatable for people? I don't know. I, 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 I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah, we did do that, didn't we? I thought that was interesting. Paul B said two theories. Hurt was on Bray's right hand, and now Bray is on Bo's right hand, symbolizing his own pain. Love that. He will beat people with that hand. I think Dexter, DIY, Candice, and Candice's uh, attitude towards Maxine about her brother, that was a bit close to home. They will be massacred. So you think that uh, Dexter is going to go after DIY and Candice. He'll go after his family. There was, um, there was something about family in his notes and about how they hadn't really been there for him. So that is definitely something worth uh, going back over. It'd be worth having a look at that archive recovered and reading their notes again, because I'm sure the Dexter one did speak about being, like, shunned by family, and that would be his family, Candice, Johnny, Indy. I would be nervous if I was them, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know that they're going to be a focus early doors, but... I would definitely be nervous if I was them. Right, uh, TJF 1983 said, I think we got red circles on them. Red circles, rabbit around the eyes. How do you... Okay, got you. So this is um, uh, TJF who says, each of the members have got a red circle. If you think about Huskus, it's on the snout. If you think about Howdy, it's on the hat. If you think about... Uh, Rowan, the rabbit, it's on the mallet, it's on the hammer. And if you think about Dexter, it's actually on the back of his jacket. There is a red circle, right? The only person that doesn't seem to have one is Nikki, which is really annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. I don't know why she doesn't have one, or certainly one we haven't seen yet. I hope she's got a red circle on her somewhere, because that would be a lovely little link. I mean, they're linked in so many ways anyway, but that would just be quite nice if they all had that kind of red circle somewhere. 
So, yeah, I, I thought that was really interesting. I quote tweeted this one, actually, and said it'd be really cool if they did all have, like, a red circle somewhere. Uh, Word of Wrestling said, I just noticed something. Uh, Uncle Howdy had one red dreadlock, just like Bray. Another touching tribute to his brother. That was great. I didn't, t I didn't pick up on that. So that, that's a real cool spot there from Word of Wrestling. Thomas said, I think when they refer to the talent that left during the show, it was Drew quitting to pull management away so that they were away from the massacre. I thought that was really interesting because it's true. Drew quit and we saw Adam Pearce and we saw Triple H trying to deal with that situation. Did they show us that on purpose so that we would be able to buy into the fact that they weren't around when the massacre happened. I don't mind that. I really don't mind that as a theory. Tom said uh, he was also, so this is Howdy, wearing three belts. It's true he has got uh, a, a few belts on him. Uh, that could be a tribute to how many times Bray won the WWE and Universal Championship. I thought that was uh, pretty good. thought that was pretty good. So it might just be part of the costume, but that would be a lovely little reference. Uh, it does go on to talk about the curtain looking a bit like the cover of the journal. Uh, I, I don't think that's correct, personally, because um, we've seen Gorilla quite a few times, and Gorilla was as it always is. That The pattern and the design of Gorilla has been that way for quite a while, and nothing seemed different to me. Um, I would say that the pattern on the curtain, you could kind of see a slight similarity, but I, I, I don't think that it was meant to look like the journal. That would have been amazing if it was. If there had been something in there that purposefully looked like the front cover of the journal, that would have been sick. But I did go back and watch it. I was like, no, nah, that to me looks like the pattern they've always had in Gorilla, or certainly for the past, you know, good few years. Uh, Kelly said, if there was still doubt, Braun is alive and well. So here, look, Braun Strowman sent this out. Braun said, damn, guess I missed a whole lot chasing Judgment Day out the building. So there we go. Braun Strowman uh, confirming that he wasn't involved. Um, but as we said, I think we cleaned up and cleared up uh, a fair bit of that uh, yesterday. This was Zelina Vega just tweeting out this Bray and Luke Harper picture, which was very interesting. And yeah, look at this. Uh, Luke said, in regards to Alexa being involved in the Wyatt Six, I think the seed was planted on Monday. Backstage segments, you can see Lily. I missed this. Did not see Lily backstage. Um, I think behind, was it Kyrie and Dakota? We had Huskus. And there was also like a box that looked a bit like a pig that was on a shelf as well. And there was people asking about like a black mask. Could that be the black sheep's mask? I don't know how, but did not see this. Um, and looking at it, I mean, I, I, I have not gone. I'm literally only going off this image. I, I could believe that that is the eyes and this is the hair of a lily doll. I could believe that. So was that a little reference, a little link uh, to do with the return of uh, Alexa? Again, I'd have to go back and watch the segment because you might watch it and it might turn out to be that that's just like a red rag in the background. Uh, this could just be anything, you know, and it might not be a lily doll. But just judging off this picture, I would say that looks pretty good in all fairness. That looks pretty good. Uh, here's the bear the bear talking about the red circle so dexter there you can see it i wanted to include this so that we had visuals so there it is on the hammer there it is on the hat there it is on the snout there it is on the back of the jacket the only one that can't be found is on nikki at the moment uh, the biggest hater said nikki came out of the door demonic don't go through that door unless you want to become something more, which we will see later down the road. This was a big talking point about why didn't they go through the door. Nikki does. The door bursts open. And I remember someone mentioning about the light that was shown, asking, is that the North Star? 
it was that that was mentioned. I'm not sure about that. Um, but Nikki came crawling through the door. But when Howdy and everyone come from the back, they just walk past it through the side of it. They don't go through the door. And people are like, why? I don't know if it's maybe a presentation thing. I mean, the masks were quite big. It might have actually been a case that with the big rabbit mask that genuinely Rowan couldn't fit. Plus also, it might have been that that head was just a bit too big to get through. And like, um, they might have thought we don't want anything going wrong here. So for the sake of them walking through the door or not walking through the door, let's go round the door, right? Let's go round the door. That way we haven't got any stress, any added drama. We need to, could you imagine if, if Rowan had gone through that door and his mask had got caught and then it kind of came off? It would be like a shock master moment and this group would be dead, right? So it might have just been a presentation thing. It might have just been a presentation thing. Um, or there could be another meaning for it. And that's where Biggest Hater is coming, going, I think it might be that the door, like, brings out the demonic side in you. That's why, you know, Nikki was crawling through it. It's hard to know. So I'm, I'm leaning towards it might just be a presentation thing. But, you know, what does the door sort of symbolize anyway? I mean, I think it might have this time just been a lovely callback to when Bray returns. Um, but when Bray came back, I thought it had a deeper meaning than that, of course. had a, I, I thought it was like us. I thought it was like him walking fro out from where he had been. He'd been in like a different universe or something and he opened the door and he was walking through the door now coming back into our world um but they didn't do that only nikki did that so i wonder i mean it's only just dawned on me but if that door is like a portal to another world and bray came through that portal when he returned and now nikki has come through that portal could that suggest that Howdy has not really come through that portal? Neither has the other guys in the group. They're based more in reality now. But I wonder if Nikki isn't so much. I wonder if Nikki is going to be a bit of an exception. She was the only one that came through that door. And it could just be because of presentation. They just thought, you know, let's go with Nikki. We'll bring the others round the side of the door so that they don't get their masks knocked off or whatever. It could absolutely just be that. Or is it something more so? The, the door is definitely something worth chewing over. I mean, not physically. Uh, King Joker said, I know it's a lot, but please read. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, I wanted to include this because you might remember the 168, the 197. Now, the theory that I always loved for that was that if you start at january and you work your way 168 days into the year you get to june 17th right which is when they debuted if you start at december 31st and you go 197 days it like backwards you get to june 17th the problem is that this is a leap year so that number would be wrong uh, that number should be 169, not 168. The 197 still works because a leap year only affects the start of the year. It doesn't affect the end of the year. So the 197 works, but the 168 is actually incorrect. So if they forgot that this was a leap year, they may have made a mistake there. That might have been or should have been 169. Uh, the 197 still works. So... Uh, it seems weird, but these numbers are so specific that I was quite satisfied. I was quite satisfied that they just made a mistake here, that they meant to go with 169, uh, right? But there is uh, another theory, and this is from King Joker. King Joker said, what if the 197 is pointing to the next date, the next key date? What if... The 168 is the arrival of this group and the 197 is going to be the arrival of Alexa and she is the next member that's going to join the group and she is going to arrive on that date. 
So the 197, I believe, worked out, or they worked out to be around the 15th of July, which apparently is going to be in Ohio, which is where Alexa is from. So I I think this is really good. It does. You can't get it to perfectly fit because I think there is a mistake that's been made here. So you can't quite get the dates to just, they're always just a touch off, but it, it's so good. I mean, I don't know if that's not meant to be 168 days going in that direction and 197 going from that direction. And it's basically, you know, June 17th, ping, ping, ping. And that's all it was. Yeah. Or are they saying this represents June 17th when the five are coming in and that represents when the next person arrives, which apparently works out to be in the 15th of July in Ohio. Alexa is from Ohio. So, yeah, I mean, excellent work from King Joker. Uh, I can't give you the answer to that. Obviously, I don't know. But uh, definitely that uh, date, that 15th of July, I think that's something that we need to be aware of. And uh, don't blow out of proportion. We're not saying she's definitely going to be arriving on that date or anything like that. But that's a date of interest. Let's word it that way. That's a date of interest. I'm interested in that date. Is there going to be anything that happens extra special on that date? Um, maybe, maybe not. But I'm interested in it, and that's why. Ryan said, uh, I saw the thing about all the wrestlers wearing black, and I noticed that Gable was in reds. So it was in purple, really. Black and purple, but he did have red on his boots. Uh, he was the one that was attacked. Maybe colours might now indicate who is next for the group, says Ryan. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Jess said, uh, one thing I noticed, everyone that wrestled wore mostly black, with the exception of one person, Braun, who was wearing red. Word of the red? He's got history with Bray and Rowan. So it, it, it is true. I mean, if you look, there was, I think pretty much everyone wore black in some degree. I mean, here you can see Braun has got a black T-shirt. Here you can see Gable's got a black singlet, but with like, purple highlights on it right and that seemed to be true of the whole show um i i don't know i'm really struggling with the theory about the ring gear i don't know why it was predominantly black it might have just been a coincidence there could be some more to it you are right about the red and word of the red uh, there was another uh kind of thought that i threw out earlier which was about eight minutes before we actually see the destruction out back, Braun Strowman comes running from Gorilla and he chases Judgment Day away. And the thought I had was, what if he had helped the Wyatt Six like destroy backstage? And then he's like, guys, I need to go. I can't be seen to be a part of this. Plus, I need to go and uh, chase Judgment Day away. You know, it, it could be that um, he is, like, sort of working with them. Um, I don't know that they would go after Braun. They could go after Braun. But equally, Braun could very easily work with this group. He was the black sheep. He was a gift to Bray from Sister Abigail. He is very much connected with this world. Very much connected. So... Definitely a lot of people are keeping their eyes on Braun and understandably so. So is there a little summit in the ring gear? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Dubs said, this is the best quality and the closest we've seen. The Wyatt Six entrance might be good for breaking down the tires and masks. Here you can see that, that guy in the white and a couple of camera people. Uh, look at the size of the rabbit head as well. I mean, it is so tall. I've got to think that's that's a big reason why they didn't use the door. Um, plus also, visibility might not be that brilliant in these masks. Because I don't see him wrestling in that. And I don't see him wrestling in that. They'll come down and probably do their entrances with them. But then eventually they'll take them off. And this gear looks fine to wrestle in. Look how great they look here. Uh, brilliant video footage this absolutely brilliant looks so good doesn't it 
Looks so good. Look at Nikki, man. She's, she's just got it, isn't she? So they blew it out. At this point, we've actually gone now. I mean, this we didn't see this bit. This is what happened after. Uh, we know that they just uh, walk off at this point. They just walk to the back. Um, and the crowds uh, are chanting and applauding and they stand up and start applauding. So that's what happened after. Yeah, great that was. <laughs> Jeremy, tagging me in this from Charlie. This is the SmackDown roster right now. Duh. They doing over there? <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> I just love this cat as well. Let's go. Brilliant. Uh, Jeremy again. Look at that. Chad Gable. Seth Joseph said screaming. Gone but not forgotten. Uh, that Jeff Delaney. Let's uh, go bigger on this. How long we got time wise? We got 10 minutes. My God. Wow, it's just, oh, can't believe how much we've been talking, but I, I honestly, I've spent hours going through my notifications. Uh, that Jeff Delaney said, I think the door represents the cave, the cave being the fun house. The light that illuminated the cave wall went out. Then Nikki crawled out, being the last to be set free. So the others were already out. She was the last to be set free. We always saw her inside the glitches. They came around the door to join her for this reason, because they had already left the cave. They were free in the real world world now. It, this sounds good in my head, says uh, that Jeff Delaney. I like it. I really like it. I think that's another fun theory. Yeah, I can vibe with that. Fade, uh, uh, this is brilliant. So here, look, I don't know if we saw this because there he's arguing and he walks away. Here's Adam Pierce. He's like, give me a moment, give me a moment. I don't remember this, but they walk, he walks to the back and then uh, the cameraman, look, and he runs. There's Kyrie. Did, uh, did we see this? He goes in. Did we see that? Well, I don't even know where this is from. Good job, Brian. That's a producer congratulating a cameraman. Good, and I'm get, I'm thinking this is from that show. I'm, I'm thinking this is. This was uh, tweeted out by Fade twenty hours ago. I'm thinking this is from Raw on Monday. But the way Adam Pierce ran, and then he was like, "We goods." Do you know what I mean? Like it feels like it behind the scenes. We're seeing. I, I do not know where this clip is from. I do not know where this clip is from, but uh, because it was only sent out so recently, I'm thinking, yeah, look, WWE cameraman gets his flowers from backstage officials for his work filming the Drew McIntyre segment on Raw. You love to see it. If anyone's got any more detail on that, I'm very interested where that came from. Right, Wrestle Knights. Let's have a look at this. The Pluto symbol is similar to Howdy's earring. Uh, Nightbird is another name for Lilith. Those are correct. Which is Alexa Bliss's demon Lily. So, Nightbird, Alexa, Pluto, Uncle Howdy. Just wanted to mention that because um, it is worth just reiterating that because that has been lost in the shuffle. That Pluto is believe the pluto symbol connected to uncle howdy the night birds was expected to be alexa uh could it be that she's gonna do something to do with nightbird and nightbird is another name for lilith lilith i think translates in greek to nightbird so is that a clue as to what alexa could be returning as I thought this was excellent. It's, it's, they're all things that we've spoke about during the QR code campaign. There's not anything new there, but that we've spoke about so much. <laughs> like, to revisit that, I thought was uh, good timing. Good timing. Look at this, Mitchell crying. Kenny, for your thoughts. Chad, come on. You've got to get up. <laughs> that was a, a, a scene from the lion king that was uh, edited out so there we go 
Uh, Dave said, it's not Harper's bludgeon brother mask, though. This picture, you know, the one that was in the static. I said, I think in yesterday's video, it felt like this was the closest. I still sort of feel like it is. But it is true when you actually compare them side by sides, you can sort of see differences like the nose here looks like it's got three sort of holes in it. Whereas this has just got like the two nostrils. This one looks like it's got three here. The eyes sort of look closer together, more like you would expect from human eyes. Whereas these are more on the side. So uh, Harper's eyes are further apart, yeah? So who is this? Because that's the mask I believe is on the back of Rowan's jacket or Rowan's mask. Can't quite tell if it's on the back of his mask or if his jacket comes up. Either way, the, what's on the back of Rowan, it feels like is that. What is this? We still don't have an answer on this. That's something else that we need to sort of dig into. A uh, few more bits. Uh, you cannot kill me in a way that matters. My continuing thought on this is that the door wasn't being opened for them. They've already come through. They were opening it for us to come through. To what? To maybe see into their worlds or something. I'm not sure. We didn't. We didn't go through the door though. That's the only problem. But again, I wanted to include this so that you can see all the thoughts around the door. Uh, Andy said Bo Dallas had his last match and he faced Shorty G, Chad Gable. That's interesting, isn't it? So this was, and I checked it, double checked it, this was the last match that Bo Dallas had in WWE. It was Bo Dallas, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode against Kalisto, Lince Dorado and Shorty G. Shorty G, of course, the alternative name uh, for Chad Gable. So that's pretty fun that Chad was in Bo's last match in WWE. That's pretty fun. Uh, and then this, I just thought we would uh, end on this. Look, these are, well, let's go full screen. Uh, look at these. These have been made on community creations. Uh, there is the new Nikki Cross. There is the new Huskus, Joe Gacy. Looks so good. And obviously the best they can do at the moment with what's available, Eric Rowan. So these are the ones that we've seen. So uh, absolutely brilliant job there. Not official. There's people asking, are they official? Are those the official ones? They're not official. But um, yeah, I think that uh, uh, they've done a great job of it. Absolutely brilliant. And that's it. We're running out of time, so I can't uh, uh, speak for much longer. Whew. I hope you enjoyed. That was a walk, weren't it? Eh? There was a lot there. Um, I think plenty for you to chew over uh, with all of that. Um, I'm going to go and have a lie down after that. I can tell you that much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for all the support. Uh, obviously, we'll keep uh, bringing uh, Wyatt Six info as and when it keeps coming through. I think the big thing for me was like the Adam Pierce stuff, I think is really interesting. But lots of other little thoughts about the door and the red circle and all that kind of stuff so yeah feel free to leave your comments down below if you've got any other thoughts or theories uh feel free to tag me in those over on twitter thanks for watching bye for now